The magazine Business Week called it the Thousand Island Problem. It's quite a sticky question for product designers at a major food company. What is the optimal shape for the salad dressing bottle of tomorrow? How slender can the neck be and yet still dispense the condiment at a constant rate? How should the lettering appear on the label? What will the bottle look like on a store shelf next to its rival? Package designers used to answer these questions by experimenting with dozens of physical models and different renderings. But now they're getting a hand from a new generation of special graphics computers. This method of simulating a new product promises such a competitive edge that the food company, now puzzling out the Thousand Island problem, won't let its name be used. So, to find out about these new systems, we first went to the movie industry on a trek to discover some of the important issues in the pursuit of realism by computer graphics. We wanted to see what the potential was for computer-aided design. Well, CAD CAM is in an early, in early stage, in my opinion. In fact, all computer graphics, this is the early days of computer graphics. We're still turning the crank on the, on the Model T. Uh, uh, we hope to change that, by the way. But the, the reason we see gears and camshafts and things like that right now are because you can only render in real time a small number of polygons. And as soon as possible, which I hope to, Pixar hopes to help uh, happen in, in the next, uh, say, five years, nominally, is to, is to increase the number of polygons. You know, with textures and lighting and shadows and anti-aliasing and all those nice things that are that are the tools of the trade of computer uh, synthesis and visualization. But only the extinct species, humpback whale, can give a proper response to the program. Do you concur with this opinion? Stabilize. So, what stage are we at in computer graphics development? Up to now, feature films have been one of the few uses that have shown the potential of the new systems. We are computing our trajectory at this time. Get him back! Get him back! At Industrial Light and Magic, ILM, part of Lucasfilms, they were given a problem by the director of the new Paramount production, Star Trek IV. Skylight. Captain Kirk and crew of the Enterprise have decided to travel back in time using a slingshot effect around the sun. For this shot, um, the storyboards that we had called for um, the dream sequence that uh, the character is having to begin with images of his crew members rising out of a, a sea of fog and with each face sort of uh, metamorphosing from one crew member's head to another. And so the problem, the first part of our problem was a, a data entry uh, problem. We have a couple of different ways of, of doing that. Um, we could start by showing the 3D digitizer. Oh, sure. This is our 3D digitizer. It's uh, basically a table that has a device in it to generate a magnetic field. And we have this wand, which is really an antenna, and uh, it senses the magnetic field. And with that, the computer can uh, read the X, Y, Z position and also the uh, axes of rotation, three axes of rotation. What I'm going to show you is uh, how I would digitize a hand. Actually, the whole process takes a long time, so I'll just show you a little piece. Um, we're going to make a, a patch on the surface, uh, over the surface of my finger here. And to do that, we're going to draw some control lines. Now, along these control lines is where the, the vertices of the patch are going to be. The patch is not actually going to go through these lines, but it'll be controlled by points along these lines. And I have to put in all the lines in one direction. We'll call it, say, the Y direction. And then I go back 
I can use my pocket terminal to change directions and put in control lines in the other direction. And if you, you look at the image, you can almost see that it's really drawing lines in 3D. Once I put in the control lines, I can hit a button and the computer is calculating um, the patch surface. You can see it there will we'll fly around a little bit and take a better look at that. And you see, that's just one small patch. To really do a finger, we'd have to do a patch on the bottom, and we'd have to do a patch on the end to close the finger, and so on, to, to cover the whole hand. So the control lines and their intersection points are used to define what's called a surface patch. Several of these patches are needed to describe the complete finger. This surface description is then displayed by a series of contour lines. We've got a more complete hand, which we digitized some time ago. We'll fly around and look at this. This is made of a lot of patches. Each finger has about two patches, and the top and the bottom of the hand are digitized separately. One thing that's nice about the digitizer is you can fly right through your model. That's fun. Like that. Um, with this program, we can also just freeze the view, and you'll notice that little box, and that represents a control point on the surface of the patch. And as I move the wand, I can move the surface around. That's a very good feature. Um, we can also distort the surface just a little by moving the vectors tangent to the parametric directions on the patch. And as you can see, it just sort of floats around and distorts as I move that vector. Now you can see that's going to be a very tedious thing to do an entire head that way because you have to break it up into so many small patches. So for Star Trek, what we did is we went down to this company that's in Monterey, and they have a system that uses a video camera and two light sources. And the, the two light sources shine on the head of the subject being digitized. This is Leonard Nimoy. And they create a profile of light on his head, and the camera can see that and digitize that profile. Now, Leonard Nimoy is on a, a little ro rotating turntable there, so as he turns around, you get a profile of every point on his head. Once we had the data points from the company down in Monterey, we had to convert them into a form that our computer system would understand, uh, and then link the data points into patches. Uh, this is a small section of the data, and you can see it's linked with patches. We use this program to see different views. Um, now, once we had the models, we could start to think about doing the interpolation, and the first thing we had to do was align the different heads together. I can turn Spock off and put bones on, and that's what he looks like. Now, if I put them both on together, oh, lost my pen, okay. If I put them both on together, you, you can get an idea of whether their noses align and their eyes align, and it's important to have the patches consistent for interpolation. The finished sequence also required this image of a whale. This was hand traced from a clay model using the 3D digitizer. Having created the whale and metamorphosed the heads, the action was choreographed by a keyframe animation program. The final process was to pick surface texture and specify lighting. Let's see what the computer did. Why should we never have light? 